Young and flourishing, transforming Africa. Very good evening to you who is watching Church of Uganda Family TV at this time. And that program you're watching is Flourishing Up with me, Adrian Austin Mokalazi. Now, uh, today is a special episode of Flourishing Hub. Uh, of course, Flourishing Hub is brought to you by Young and Flourishing Foundation, which is built on four pillars. Uh, one of these pillars is daring, money, strategy, and mentorship. These are strong pillars which will help you as a young person to flourish and to be a world-class business person. But as we know that... Uh, it is now 50 years ever since the United Nations Environment a Project, a program, sorry, established a 5th June as the World Environment Day. So uh, this today was or is the World Environment Day. And this year's commemorations here in Uganda were held at uh, Kololo Independence Grounds. And the theme for this year is really so interesting. That is... Uh, uh, solutions to plastic pollution now uh, a hashtag beat plastic pollution as we know that uh, uh, more than 400 million tons of plastic are produced every year unfortunately half of this is produced for one-time use now the question is what happens after this one-time use now this means that uh, between 19 to 23 tons uh, end up into water bodies, that is lakes, rivers, streams, and other drainage channels, including that drainage channel near your home or at the roadside where we dump most of these plastic wastes. Now, today, our plastics are very many, uh, but also you realize that there are very many other ways in which the environment has been degraded uh, besides plastics. Now, that is why we have our topic today, which is our environment, our heritage, but having a big question whether there are other problems to the environment besides plastics. Uh, with us is one of us, our guest, who is none other than Maskavian, who is a specialist in disaster and risk reduction. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you again on Flourishing Hub this evening. Thank you. Yes. Um, um, thank you for having me again. Mm. It's good to see you. Good I to see you too. If you find that time missing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where it goes. You don't need to report a, a police incident uh, to report the incident of police. Okay. It's good to have you. Good to have you, Mr. Muska. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. And uh, now that we are even talking about environment, uh, we have you as a resourceful person. That one a specialist in uh, disaster and risk reduction. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, uh, as we start, what is your message on this day as we commemorate the World Environment Day? It's, 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 it's a good day to mm. talk about beating plastic pollution. Because if we don't do something about it mm. and continue as business as usual, and nothing is done. Mm. We continue to use plastics the way we are using them. And nobody pays attention to the circular management, mm. all-round management of plastics. Mm. Then we already have a problem as we speak. Yeah. But then when we project for the future, it's just getting worse. That's why today's day internationally and even at national level today mm. has been used and utilized. And I'm glad it has been done so to raise the polite, the impact and significance of plastics. Ladies and gentlemen, I use plastics. Mm. You use plastics. True. Every home uses plastic. Mm. Every corporate person, professional and professional, tall, short, girl, man, woman, we all use plastics. We are using plastics. And for some reason, it's 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 an easy thing. It's an easy thing to to deal with. To mm. you we you easily. It's part and parcel of our normal operations. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why, as you have already indicated, in Kampala alone, mm. Kampala alone, we are producing 600 metric tons of plastic waste per day. Mm. That is a very, a, a very big problem. According to available reports, mm. NEMA reports, mm. and other bodies. So, and where we seemingly having a system of trying to collect this plastic, only 40% of this plastic is collected. What that means is that 60% of what you and me are using because i'm also a plastic user a user you mm. are using each one of exactly. us is that's why we need to mention and talk yeah. about this issue mm. is left in the environment and therefore mm. today was a good day and an important day to mention how to begin to focus on how do we produce this plastic mm. how is it used and then when it is utilized or used how is it disposed mm. to begin with Mm-hmm. And to, to raise a polite uh, on that made today a very, very important environment. And as you are aware, you've said the last 50 years that over years, mm-hmm. people, governments, actors have, have the environment day has, has, has caused very many people to, to, to rally various environmental issues behind it. Mm-hmm. And therefore, So, uh, because you realize that, uh, sincerely, as you say, that traf- uh, plastics are a big threat to, 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 to uh, the world as, as we speak even now. So, uh, you can continue from where you start. You, you, you stop. No, I, I, was, I, was, I was just saying, mm. I'm just going to repeat myself a bit. Mm. And I was saying that Kampala alone... Mm which is the first city yeah. where there is a bit of order, mm. where there is a bit of concentration and attention to management of plastic waste, mm. 40%, only 40% of what we generate mm. on a daily mm. is what is disposed of mm. or collected. 60% remains in the environment. And so what is happening, and the importance of today's World Environmental Day and talking yeah. about plastics, is that plastic pollution, waste plastic, waste plastics, mm. and plastics are beginning to have a notable, noticeable, tangible effect on the environment and human well being. Mm. And therefore, even if we are not doing it for any cause and for any purpose, mm. is to make sure that you and me and our children and their children, we begin to put in place mechanisms, means to deal with the plastic and the waste thereof, so that then, over time, mm. the problem that we already have at hand of 60% of our waste mm. Mm, has solutions. Because that's why we are, we're having this discussion. And therefore, um, unfortunately, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate something by the end of this program. Mm. Just imagine nothing is done about plastic waste. And a cavera, mm. normal cavera, mm. gets in a pipe, in a, water, in a water pipe that is transporting water from one place to another. Mm. And it gets in the middle somewhere and blocks it towards the hospital, for example. And what that would, what that would mean? Just imagine the water life. Mm. That if it gets clogged in water at the base, at the sink of the lake, of the ocean, what it means for the for the animals and, and, and the and the biodiversity within the water system and what that means for you and me. Sure. When you think about soil, think about soil for instance. Mm. Okay? Yeah. That if this if there is a layer of soil mm. and there is a thin layer within the soil, then the normal soil recharge system as God created it is not functioning yeah. because there is a thin layer. So the impact and effect of waste plastic, when we begin to talk about it, today for Uganda we were saying mm. stop pl- uh, uh, plastic pollution yes. today. Yeah. In, globally, we are talking about beat, 
plastic pollution yeah. because by 1950 mm. globally we are generating 1 1.2 million tons by 2017 globally we are generating 390 390 mm. metric, yeah. tons. metric tons by 2017 globally mm. 2017 this is 2023 so this is an old <laughs> statistic for your information mm. however do you know that for the 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 in Uganda alone, we are generating around eight hundred thousand metric tons. Yes. And you know what? Eight hundred metric, eight hundred thousand metric tons, are around forty thousand. Mm. Actually, four hundred thousand elephants. You see one mm -hmm. elephant mm. when you go to Queen Elizabeth National yeah. Park. Yeah. The if we were to gather the every year. Mm. Mm? the plastic waste we generate we would that means we would put putting together 400,000 elephants that's the amount of plastic that we are generating wow. 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 and therefore the, the effort of today and the mm. drive of today mm. is beginning to align our effort so that we put our attention to absolute plastic waste management and what we need to do and more importantly we are saying beginning not to just have good meetings <laughs> not just to have good discussions mm. but we shift away from the talk mm. to practice we turn every possible idea that will help minimize the plus the problem of waste plastic mm. and turn it into every idea that is possible that will contributing that will contribute towards reducing waste plastic we take that action mm. we turn away move away from the idea because you realize if it is talking the talking has been done for very many years and it has not yielded no 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 my brother do not underestimate the importance of talking mm. because that's why we are here that's mm. why even the, the world I mean the, uh, previously previously yes the, the, the talking has been done so we are saying let's have the shift yes from the talk yeah to, to the action walk. Mm. From the theory to the to practice, mm. from ideas to action, mm. doing something about it. And those are the details of the discussion that we are going to, exactly. to have today. Exactly. Yes. So uh, we, we, we now get into the details because we are really, we want to understand, we want to see what we need to do as Ugandans for, for a start and uh, to be specific because you realize there is a very big threat to our environment when it comes to plastic pollution but uh, uh, maybe even if we put it generally as pollution to our environment is a very big threat and it is a burden we have today in Uganda and you realize that uh, we could be even having certain diseases simply because of this that we think is secondary to the problems we have now. So uh, we really want to get now to the discussion of uh, the other, uh, whether plastics is the only environmental threat we have in Uganda. Before we go to having discussed if this is mm. the only environmental, it is mm. the actual and also real Mm. environmental threat that we're having in Uganda. Mm. But please also note that globally speaking, 3% of global, has, global greenhouse gas emissions come from plastic. Mm. That means directly plastic is contributing to climate change yeah. to begin with. Mm. That is one that we need to know. And when we talk about how to go into the details of how it is causing global warming, uh, uh, that means at the end of the day, it is affecting me and you mm. both directly and indirectly mm. because it is contributing to what is our most biggest challenge, which is climate change. In other words, even if I keep quiet about it, it will, about affect, it, you. It will affect me. So let's talk about it exactly. and find solutions. Exactly. <laughs> then also, it affects food production, mm. plastic. Mm. And as already mentioned earlier, whether plastics these plastics that we use end up in our water resources and systems whether they end up in our soils whether they end up in our vegetation mm. they are causing negative effects did you know some of the plastics don't take less than that there's no plastic that takes less than 400 years to decay for every plastic you see at least a minimum of 400 years for it to be to decompose like you, if you throw a banana thing there it mm, decomposes yes after a few days 
no plastic takes less than 400 years for that to happen and who has ever i'm saying let's let's time. talk about it because there's a problem exactly. that's why i'm saying exactly. if we are generating for mm. uganda mm. 800,000 metric tons per year of waste plastic where mm. is it going where is it ending up and that's why we are saying highlighting the polite of how it is produced mm. how it is used and how it is disposed mm. and i was talking about it affects food production okay. now when we talk about something that affects food food production that is close to home exactly even when we ask christians we fast mm. time comes and you break the fast you have to break the fast <laughs> <laughs> it affects food production mm. <coughs> you still need food and therefore leading to food insecurity and there are simple considerations when we talk about food security. Yeah. So we are looking at how we plastic, uh, waste plastic affects the different areas mm. that inform, that ensures that everybody, every household is food secure. Every school has food to eat. Every hospital. Okay? So, and, and how it affects food availability, how it affects food production, mm. how it affects food you utilization yeah. and help waste plastic affects food accessibility okay yeah and therefore that's why we must begin tackling and discussing this issue of waste plastic and that's why i said right now as we speak mm. it is it is affecting our environment yeah but much more even our human will be that's very very important and therefore that's why i'm saying is it the only environmental problem? Is it the only problem that we should be discussing? Mm, mm. Yes, we should be discussing it as an environmental problem. You know why? Because mm -hmm. you and me, we are still dependent on natural resources for survival. Mm. You That's see, true. a river can live whether you're there or not. Yeah. A forest can grow its natural habitat mm. and thrive without you and me without a human being true a lake lake victoria mm. yeah if it chooses to live it can live but if it chooses to dry yeah uh, you don't want the imagination of even you know even when we're in senior two ways to say i will love you until lake victoria <laughs> dries because there is no imagination in other words yes. the imagination of it drying in our minds even with the available technology, it's not that right. prediction is not there, yeah. that this natural resource will stay with us. Yes. But we are saying if we don't deal with the problem of waste plastic, mm. these ecosystems, these natural habitats that me and you are dependent on are going to be affected. Because at the end of the day, these plastics end up in these systems. God created them, these, each of these systems, mm. God created them to self-sustain. Mm. That's why a fish must be in water. But if a cavera or a plastic bottle ends up there, it disrupts how the normal functioning of the water happens and then how the fish should survive. And that same applies to other natural resources like forests mm. that we have. That's why we must have a discussion on waste products. So sure. is it a problem? Yes. Because when it affects the environment, it affects you, it affects our livelihoods and our businesses. Right. And at the end of the day, we find that we are in an environmental crisis. Mm. So, so that's why it is important and that's why it is a problem in our environment, in our well-being that we must tackle and we must deal with. Now, since we are looking at, uh, we've seen how big this problem is and how threatening it is if we keep quiet about our plastic management because you realize that of recent NEMA came up with uh, directives uh, where every public vehicle is required to have a dustbin one uh, so that people don't uh, throw dispose. dispose of stuff by the roadside but also now the problem is when we dump this stuff in the dustbin in the vehicle how is uh, the, 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 the conductor, the tax conductor or, the, or the, 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 the bus conductor going to dispose of 
this uh, plastics uh, this plastic that we've dumped into the dustbin so i think we will now look at uh, the, um, the practical ways in which plastic can be disposed of i think that's why i talked about the issue the the, the circular management mm. because we we would not only focus on dispose alone mm. disposal alone is a small aspect of waste plastic management mm. so we need to that's why i'm using that word look at the whole cycle okay at production for mm. instance mm. we should look engage the private sector the uganda plastic manufacturers association the plastic manufacturers association mm. The last time I checked, there were around 17 plastic recycling, plastic manufacturing companies. Mm. And also recycling that I'll talk about later, mm. shortly. And engage this private sector. Not only those who are manufacturing the what? The bottles. Because in Uganda, the biggest uh, plastic that we have is basically PET. Mm. PET is P-E-T. Mm. In full, which is polyethylene. That's what the, the pronunciation. Mm. Please don't tell me to write it. <laughs> I can try and pronounce it because it don't cause the insecurity. So, <laughs> so PET mm. is the most common, the water bottle. Yeah. The, even it is the most common plastic and then Cavera. Mm. Those are the mon most common plastics in our environment and the ones that we use. Mm. So engage these manufacturers, but also the water bottling companies, for example. Mm. Engage the, the soda producing companies. companies. I had already mentioned the water bottling companies yes. and the likes and ensure that first of all, there is what we call globally and even nationally, what we call the payers, the polluters payers principle. Mm. The, uh, the polluters payers principle is simple in its terms. It means that the person, the entity, that is responsible for introducing a, to a toxic thing in the environment is responsible for its pollution and handling it and managing it. Mm. So as Uganda and as a nation, we need to enforce the, the, pollu the, the polluters payers principle in our country. Mm. And that is beginning with government, NEMA, and other bodies. Does this mean that... Um these companies should, should close down so by no 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 mm. by mandate mm. coca-cola mm. reham rainsor water uh, rainsor water company mm. Mm, and others should be responsible for that plastic bottle for that bottle top to ensure that when i sell this soda i have put in place a system i have put in place a process of making sure that this bottle is going to be recycled it will either be recycled be reused okay or pu be put to alternative use to begin with it should be the sole responsibility of these uh, companies, companies that are involved in the production of these plastics mm. to begin with by mandate Actually, that is number two. Definitely, the overall mandate is government mm. that has the responsibility as per the constitution, per our constitution. To begin with, it is government that has the responsibility to protect its citizens. Now, when we always talk of protection, we immediately our minds run to security. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but also it is the responsibility and the so core mandate of government to make sure that actually you are living in a healthy and clean environment. Yes. It is actually a right. Yes, it is your right and yeah. to us. Mm. But government in this role, in this one, bef uh, has the responsibility, and that's why I've brought it up, to ensure that there is compliance to this principle that, as far as we are concerned, has not been an area of much interest and attention. Why? Mm. Because of many reasons. Mm. Our weak infrastructure, mm. limited resources, mm. Uh, not strong institutions to uh, enforce yeah. huh? and others but mm. government now needs to reprioritize and say no look 
there is this global mandate and national mandate and these companies to begin with have a lot and responsibility mm -hmm. okay yeah. if let's use the example of covid mm. the president said put on a mask yeah. we all put them on yeah what about a polluter who is regulated by government that means they can comply mm. to begin with so that's why we are saying how it is produced mm. to begin the responsibility are there are there guidelines in place so far that uh, govern the production of plastics uh, as we what we yes there is definitely as you know in 2017 mm. government passed a bill the environment bill yeah. that even included a ban on the famous Cavera. Cavera, yeah okay but that's why now i started with government number two mm. i've talked about uh the, the, the companies the, the the polluters payers principle yes. but now you bring me the issue of the legal framework do mm. we have a favorite framework in uganda mm. that guides on waste on waste plastic uh, uh, pollution and management yes it is there now but now the issue is now what compliance of making sure that what is stated in this bill is actually implemented, implemented. that's why one of the challenges so implementation and enforcement needs to be a tough notch and 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 and, put, and, and followed to the dot mm. which is not being done for many reasons and one of the biggest reasons is definitely these manufacturers and and these private sector members pay tax yeah which is government's interest but also they create jobs for many Ugandans. Mm. But they also they intend to imply that they are doing something about this. That's why there has to be check and balances. And from the top level of government, that's why I will use even this opportunity to call upon government to take mm. this matter up seriously yeah. to implement the, 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 the bill that was enacted in 2017, but also there are other instruments and measures they can take, like I said mm. above. That is very clear. And therefore, that is production and the role of government, but also the polluters, all those are responsible for these plastics uh, to okay. be that, uh, that we're using in the environment. Okay. But also now, utilization. Mm. So that was, that was a bit about production. Production, now utilization, because so, I think now yes, this, this is the most important. Yeah, now. So on, you know, you know the athletes, so we have talked yeah. of production. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about utilization, then we talk about disposal. Exactly. So utilization mm. to begin with we need to be aware D do you think people are aware no we assume they are that's the right word we assume they are and let's check a, a short commercial break when we return we are going to now elaborate how we think people are aware yet in actual sense they're not aware stay with us Thank you so much. You are still watching Church of Uganda Family TV and Flourishing Hub. We are looking at our environment, which is our heritage. We have nowhere else to go but to dwell in this natural environment that God gave us. However, it is worrying and, you know, at the same time threatening, especially when we look at the way we have turned this environment and what we have made it be and one of the ways in which we have distorted it is the way we use plastics now we are looking at how plastic our plastics is a very big threat to our environment so the way we this the way we use and dispose of the plastic is really very very important now with us is uh mr vian muska who is uh, a specialist in disaster and risk reduction so we are looking at plastics basically and before the break just in case you're just joining us we are looking at how people think they know or how we think people know uh, but in actual sense they really don't know but uh you can first of all take us through the various forms of plastics that are available uh, uh, for consumption on market? You know, to begin with, mm. we need to know that anything we do mm. has an effect on us, positive or negative. Or negative. 
And therefore, that's why we must take responsibility for our actions mm. and mind what we do. So I had already mentioned that we have PET, yeah. uh, which is, uh, uh, as I had said, polyethylene, uh, mm. uh, uh, terephthalate. So it is the, 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 the bottles that we use for water, the mm. water bottles that we use, or the soda bottles for that matter. Mm. That is one type of plastic, uh, those bottles, okay? And then uh, we have HDPE. Now that's another kind of plastic, which is high density polyethylene, mm. and that is what is used uh, for, for grocery bags, milk bags, recycling bins, agricultural pipes, mm. okay? Uh, playground equipment. So all those leads, mm. shampoo bottles, okay? So the top of the bottle, when you, when you, remove, when you, when you, when you remove the top of the bottle, the mm. top of the bottle is a different plastic. Uh, from the from the bottle that is HDPE. Okay. okay. So high density polyethylene. Then we have PVC. Mm. Uh, PVC that is a polyvinyl chloride, and um, it is both rigid and flexible, and mostly used in building and constructions. Mm. That's that's what the plastic that we normally use on yeah. when we are doing construction and building. The ones we commonly call the pipes. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. But also mm. the yes, what we normally use the pipes and mm. uh, but also we have like the DPC, the one that we put there. Mm. The yeah. proof course. Yes, but also the windows, mm. the doors, those mm. the plastic hard ones. Uh, so they help to make sure that they are versatile uh, and they are they, they are durable. Okay. okay? Mm. Then we have LDPE, which is low density. Uh, which is a low density uh, 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 cavera, mm. and uh, for it, it is not often recycled. Mm. Okay, okay, and it, it is the, the, the normal cavera that that we normally mm. where you put meat, where we are used to putting meat. Mm. Okay, uh, and it is very cheap to produce. So the plastic bags, mm? Mm. the various containers, the, 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 the those are all in that kind of that kind of cavera. Okay. Then we have the polypine, polyp polypine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, forgive my English. Poly polypine. <laughs> Poly pro propine. Propine is the is also the most widely used uh, plastic on the market. Mm -hmm. It is hard and sturdy, but uh, for so for example, yogurt containers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in this kind of polypropine uh, uh, kind of plastic. Mm -hmm. Then also we have the PS called polystyrene okay mm. it is also a kind of plastic and uh, like uh, that's the kind of plastic we use to for egg cartons mm, 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 mm. Mm? so w when you, you know when you, when you put for that's the kind of plastic we use for for insulation mm. that is the kind of plastic when you're packaging a gift for your girlfriend the Christmas gifts mm. that is polystyrene is among the category of PS and those are the, uh, the then we have the other polycarbons mm. other plastics that are co considered polycarbons that are used to build tough products mm. okay those are called uh, polycarbons for example uh, the lenses for sunglasses mm. the, the 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 spots the heavy spots not this one on the sun there is heavy yeah. uh, then safety goggles mm. all fall in poly carbon uh, carbonates so and that sometimes you don't even know that that is also plastic yes it is plastic so we have pet hdpe mm. pvc mm. so do you see these banners that we put on the road when yes. we were coming uh, yes that is pvc and it is one of the most dangerous uh, plastics lodpe pp ps and others mm. Okay. Are they the, uh, is it the same material that is used to manufacture tents? Yes. Okay. That is PVC. Okay. And car covers. Some mm -hmm. of us will have cars. Mm -hmm. So, wh what we are trying to say, there are different kinds of plastics. Now, we are looking at the utilization now that we know that these different uh, types. And uh, like we said earlier, that some people, sometimes we think people know these things, but we are learning we are also coming to know that uh, all these are under the category of plastics because when you talk about plastics, plastics is a weird thing. Now, we are, we are looking at uh, utilization and disposal. So, on, on, we are still on use yes, because that's yes. why we have mentioned the different exactly. things. Mm. So, for us to be able to begin to deal with the issue of waste plastic, which is a problem now, mm. and if we keep doing business as usual 
it's going to be a much bigger problem very soon. And it is going to affect, for example, air quality, mm. water quality, mm. soil quality. And what do those lead to as far as our lives and livelihoods are concerned? When I mention lives and livelihoods, I'm meaning our businesses where we earn a living. Yeah. What, what will that mean uh, for, 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 for how we live? Mm. And therefore, there are some things that we need to do differently. To begin with, we need to do... I know I'm going to talk about the three R's, reuse, recycle, mm. and, and, and reduce. Yeah. But I think for me, there are some things that we need to note. P to begin with, mm. for each of the plastic, we need to do what we call waste management at source. Mm -hmm. uh, waste management at source, this is where me, Vian, mm. when I generate waste, when I use a plastic, hmm, first of all, I should use it for the right purpose. Mm. For example, most plastics are not meant for hot things. Mm. So the use, so have you ever used it in the, the village? Maybe for you, he's in Kampala now in the <laughs> middle of the city, you may not know this. But remember, you would use a cup mm. or use a plastic plate. And over time, you, you look for the red color and the red color is no more. Yeah. Where has it gone? You've consumed it because you're putting hot food. So plastics are not meant for hot things. Not hot food, not hot porridge, not hot water. Yet very many uh, school-going children use plastic cups for porridge. At and I time. think we can all afford to have alternative plastic cups for hot things for our children. So the right knowledge and information is if there's something hot, do not use a plastic cup or a plastic plate. We can use it, the plastic plate for fruits and other things but not hot food mm. we can use other types of cups mm. clay cups for for drinking hot things so we can use our plastics for cold water and the uh, and bushera mm. and local mm. <laughs> I, I wanted to say the other one but <laughs> i remember them on family tv but bushera okay so um what i'm trying to say is 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 to begin with uh, waste management mm. at source and how on how we use yeah. plastics mm. and that what what that means that if i use a plastic i use it right for the right purpose mm. but also after i have used that cavera that plus that bottle i dispose it off right so waste management at source means that if i am disposing of something mm. give me that paper if i'm disposing of something mm. if i am disposing of something mm. then i need to put it in its right bin or compost that means and we separate this to begin with simple science biodegradable things should not be mixed with non-biodegradable things in simple terms, when we talk of biodegradable things, are things that decay. Mm. So, everything that decays, it should be in one bin, it should be in one compost. So, where I throw banana peels, shouldn't be, the be place where, where I, I throw the cavera. Mm. So, I should have the pit where I would throw the cavera. I have the pit where I throw banana peels, and when I sweep, I have another one where I'll put the glass. I have another one where I'll put the bottles. I have another one where I put, you know, non-biodegradable things, things that do not decay. So the cavera is among the category of non-biodegradable things. Also, let me use this chance to talk about actually dangerous waste. Mm -hmm. Even you may generate waste which is chemical, full of chemicals that is really dangerous depending on the nature of activity here it can be a business here in in nasa road where they do a lot of printing yeah. or where you do manufacturing mm. and you generate a dangerous waste mm. that's why it should not be discharged in a natural channel or even in the lake mm. or in the river we have some industries small scale industries where they draw their pipe at a distance and they are discharging dangerous harmful influence into into a river channel or into into even uh, a swamp yeah please we so broadly speaking waste management we should emphasize as a matter of practice mm. 
what we call waste management at source. Now, in Uganda, mm. yeah. that practice does not exist in our country. It doesn't exist even among us. It doesn't exist even in our homes. It doesn't exist. That's why you'll be driving on the road and someone will just finish eating or drinking that soda or, or eating uh, something from that caviar and you see it naturally without <laughs> thinking twice, like a, natural, like a natural reaction, they throw it out of the window. That's why Nema, early alone, was struggling with even making sure that people should stop throwing around things. Because in our perception, in our mindset, we did not grow up with that kind of mindset. So when you have traveled a bit, when you go out of the country and you go to developed countries, you find everywhere, anywhere, by nature, by design, mm. there is, in terms of waste management, a dustbin for each everything. Now, even you, when you find that practice, your mind adapts. Haven't we had? Have you gone to Katuna? Yeah, I have. As long as you're crossing to Rwanda, people are told, Mm. And nobody even crosses to the nearby country with a what? A plastic. a plastic. Why? Because it is a mindset change. Mm. So, this is a problem, ladies and gentlemen, as a church, as actors that can change. Mm. And we need to do a mindset change about waste management beginning with that. Before we talk about government, mm. before we talk about money, before we talk about capacity building, before we after talking about manufacturers then it goes to me and you now uh, as we wind and that, up this and, and no 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 we yeah. are not winding because now i've, I've now even opened just you, a small you, you, bit you, you, you've because turned now, the tables yes. <laughs> but but the time is running so now. but 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 so in in, in summary yeah we, we have to really look at um waste management at source whether it is at individual level mm whether it is at household level, mm. whether it is at business level, mm. business, even these small shops, every entity, okay. if, from the smallest shop to the biggest industry in Namave, how we manage our waste. Mm. And then, um, uh, after we've dealt with the issue of how we manage it at source, then we deal with the issue of how, then it is distributed to disposal. How then is it disposed of, including with, uh, with small community household level, mm. disposal units, uh, communal, we then talk about communal disposal points. Then uh, that's when we talk of the chitezi now of the mm. local government, district level, city level, disposal, point, yeah. uh, disposal uh, waste uh, areas. Mm. And, and then, so we need to look at then, so how those, uh, from the small compost pit that we talked about for manure, mm. because remember I talked about, uh, yeah. um, then look at, at the different levels and implement to the letter these different disposal points. Then look at also transportation system and the management from point of generation mm. to point of disposal at the different levels and religiously uh, build capacity across different levels. Mm. Like the Ministry of Health, remember at a certain point, the Ministry of Health did a campaign on making sure that every home has a, 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 a utensil drying yeah. area, right. every home has a toilet. Mm. Now we need to do a serious, rigorous campaign to make sure every home has different disposal points mm. and then communal village, uh, now with the parish development model, actually dr drive on the parish development model to make sure that we have parish level dis uh, disposal points and district level and then the other levels that we want to talk about city level or division level and then central mm. then the other thing so then the other thing is uh embracing the three errors of mm. reduce mm. where we, we talk about when we talk about reduce we are talking about minimizing the amount of plastic mm. but also the amount of plastic waste we create as simple as that. Mm. Begin to look at the different actions on in relation to reducing. But also reuse. Mm. Reuse, we are looking at using the same plastic one more time. Mm. More than once. That is reduce, reusing. Mm. Making sure that the plastics that are already with us in our possession, we use them more than once. Yeah. But even more importantly, recycle. Mm. That the plastics that we have are put to alternative use. use. Okay. 
You get. Yeah. So if this is a tin of yogurt, mm. I have finished taking my sweet yogurt. yogurt. What alternative use can I use the tin for? I found a home where they get that tin and actually use it as a cup for coffee. Yeah. That's where they do their coffee from. But now they are posing the other danger. Mm. But at least you can plant flowers in, in, in that cup. Mm. You, the children can learn how to plant different flowers in that cup. And they look after them and water them. Okay. So the, 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 the campaign of reduce, mm. reuse, and recycle mm. is very, very important, important for us. And uh, we cannot go beyond this. Of course, it is only time that limits our discussion. But thank you so much for watching Church Vigana Family TV and Flourishing Hub. I believe out of this discussion, you have learned a lot, especially when it comes to our plastic management. Thank you so much. God bless you. We meet again next time.